So hi, my name is Kira Hillhouse. I am a junior biology major with a pre-med concentration and a minor in chemistry here at Cal U. And I'm currently in the microbiology class with um, Dr. Michelle Falconas. And we just isolated and screened soil bacteria um, as a source of antibiotics. As many of you may know, antibiotic resistance is emerging into one of the United States' largest medical issues. Um, resistance typically occurs by the overuse and misuse of antibiotics, but it is possible to fight this crisis, but antimicrobials would have to be combined to reverse the mechanisms of this resistance. So the purpose um, of this experiment was to find antibiotic producers in our soil that we can ultimately use to combine and develop new antibiotics. So what we did was we used 12 bacterial colonies that were isolated and screened against S. epidermis, B. subtilis, and E. coli. If enough positive producers are found, uh, we may be able to combine them to counter certain resistance mechanisms. So leading into our method section, um, the soil was first collected in California PA and was then diluted up to a factor of one times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, this was then used, these dilutions were then used to create spread plates to isolate single colonies that were used to create streak plates. And then these streak plates were then used to make a master plate using the pick and patch method. The physical characteristics of this master plate were observed and recorded in a colony morphology table. This is used to help us get closer to the identification of these organisms. Um, these are also these help these steps were also helpful um, and done to make the antibiotic screening a simpler process. These antibiotic screens um, were run using safe relatives of the organism of the pathogens B subtilis on nutrient auger. Um, e. coli on lysogeny broth or LB auger, and S. epidermitis on LB auger as well. Each organism grown was then picked and patched onto these pathogen covered plates. Um, we then used differential media and selective media um, using two plates of McConkie auger. Um, and we used these two plate four organisms using the streak plate method. The control was the E. coli and B. subtilis, and the test plate was the isolate number 11 and then isolate number one from the master plate. We then performed biochemical tests, including the gelatin test with B. subtilis and isolate number 11, the oxidase test with B. subtilis, E. coli, and isolate number 11, and the catalase test with B. subtilis, E. coli, and isolate number 11. So leading into this result section, um, as you can see here, plate A was screened against S. epidermitis, uh, plate B was screened against B. subtilis, and plate C was screened against E. coli. Um, positives were found on plate B against B. subtilis, as indicated by a clearing around the isolate. Uh, we saw that both 9 and 11 had these clearings, but because they had such similar characteristics, it was assumed that both were the same bacteria, so only ice isolate 11 was counted. Uh, moving into the differential and selective media section here, um, we used McConkie auger, which selects for gram negative bacteria and will show whether or not the organism is a lactose fermenter. But we observed that plate A um, has B subtilis and E. coli. Um, the auger remained purple, but only the E. coli group. And on plate B, um, the positive isolate number 11 and the first isolate uh, were also plated, but we observed that the auger faded slightly to an opaque color, but growth was only seen for the antibiotic producer number 11. So moving into the biochemical tests, um, picture A here shows the gelatin test with the positive antibiotic producer number 11. Um, picture B shows B subtilis, um, and both appeared to be liquid after exposure to the bacteria. Picture C here shows an oxidase test with B subtilis, E. coli, and the positive isolate number 11, but no color change was observed. Picture D down here shows a catalase test with also B subtilis, E. coli, and the antibiotic producer number 11, and all bubbled after the addition of hydrogen peroxide. 
Um, so leading into our discussion, uh, what, what do all of these mean? So the positive result of the antibiotic producer was indicated by the clearing around an isolate, as I said earlier. And this was only found for isolate number 11. Uh, for our differential and selective media, the first plate was a control with E. coli, and that was um, shown to grow, and it kept the auger purple, which means that it was gram-negative and lactose fermenting. B. subtilis, on the other hand, did not grow, so it was assumed to be gram-positive, as McConkie auger selects for gram-negative organisms, and had no impact on the media, so it is unknown of whether or not it is lactose fermenting. On the second plate, and indicated B in the results section, uh, was the antibiotic producer 11, which grew, so the gram, so it was gram negative, but it was caused the media to fade into an opaque color, which meant that it was non-lactose fermenting. Um, isolate number one did not grow at all, so it was um, assumed to be gram positive and was unknown if it was a lactose fermenter. Uh, moving lastly into our biochemical tests, um, the gelatin test tested for the presence of the gelatinase enzyme um, in B. subtilis and the positive isolate both turned to liquid, meaning the gelatinase enzyme was present in both bacteria. Uh, the robust growth that was observed, um, it's just clumpy white basically in the tubes, may have just been a result of the continued growth after, li after liquefaction. Um, the oxidase test um, was with, on the filter paper with E. coli B. subtilis and the positive isolate 11, and no color change appeared, so it was assumed that cytochrome oxidase enzyme was not present in any of these organisms. And last, lastly, our catalase test, um, test for uh, the enzyme catalase, uh, which can be observed by bubbling in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. So in our case, um, all three bacteria, E. coli B. subtilis and the positive isolate bubbled after hydrogen peroxide was added. So we can assume that catalase was present. So after all of these tests, we can conclude that the positive antibiotic producer was a gram negative organism that cannot ferment lactose, but does contain the gelatinase and the catalase enzymes. So thank you for listening to my presentation and looking at my poster. Um, I hope that in the future, we, we will be able to use these techniques to fight the antibiotic res resistance crisis. And that's all I have for you today, but thank you for your attention.